Okay, I think we can start. We'll come at the last part of our conference. Uh, after this part, there will be this uh, long-waiting uh, closing reception. So I hope you will all stay longer. And uh, now uh, we can look at uh, some presentations uh, of people that deal with uh, biodiversity for a long time. And one of them is uh, Mr. Arsen Gasparian, the director of Institute of Botany at the Academy of Sciences. So, uh, Arsen, please. Thank you very much. I will start in English. Thank you, the Armenian. Yeah, first of all, I would like to congratulate our colleague Jack uh, and Finnish colleagues with successful completion of the twinning project. I think it's not the end, it's more start because I really emphasize the idea of uh, cooperation regarding the biodiversity monitoring and some other components on regarding the capacity building and so on. And um, uh, I will continue in Armenian. Yeah, I, because it's mostly Armenians are here. Yeah, and you have a translation option. Um, I saw Bolos Yarki Arten Hoknatsing, Bawakan Shatla Selenk. I'm already tired. We have heard to a number of presentations already, so I will try to be brief. I will speak about uh, the research and biodiversity environmental activities. Uh, that were implemented in the Botany Institute. I will not present all of them today and I will not go too deep into the details, but I will make a couple of announcements about the upcoming events to which you can participate. I will uh, give an overview of our institute. So you can see uh, Armen Tahtajan in this picture because the institute is named after Armen Tahtajan. Uh, it is important to remind that this kind of scientists who established an institute and the, who were, he was the first director, the founding director of the institute and uh, in 45 when there was the war going on, he established uh, the institute, he worked there and uh, this reminds all of us that no matter how hard the situation is, the research is one of the sectors that always requires uh, cooperation and support and it doesn't matter in which sphere we work, our activities shall be based on research data. Uh, the institute has 82 employees, 47 of them are scientists. So we have uh, certain departments and uh, the most important, the foundation of them is uh, the taxonomy. We have uh, geobotany and physiology, paleobotany departments. Many people do not know us as an institute, they know us as botanical garden. We have botanical gardens are under our supervision, Yerema 7 and Bonadzor botanical gardens, where, uh, which are very important places in terms of conservation, particularly ex situ conservation. We call it uh, Montana Doran, a reservoir of uh, plant species and these are very important for reproduction and this kind of uh, project. Uh, when it comes to funding, any research institution has basic financing which is covering the salaries but uh, we also implement some research uh, within the frames of this budget we have different publications on the flora and the geographical, physiological uh, spheres. Uh, I would also like to speak about infrastructures, uh, which are added uh, continuously. The first one is the National Herbarium. 
uh, it is in our institute and we have more than half a million species uh, here which is uh, in terms of data science this is a very important repository because herbariums are important globally when it comes to research because we understand how this plant species have changed across along the time where they exist where that it no longer exists and the second one is the uh, bank of seeds which is very important in any country of the world especially for wild species because if uh, the given species uh, is becomes extinct then we can have the sample in the bank so we should promote this sphere we have some uh, scientific uh, funding uh, funding for scientific projects the first one is uh, a research project connected with invasive plant species. It is implemented by Dr. Gergi Faivush, and this invasive plant species are very important in terms of biodiversity because uh, they are very important uh, in terms of inventorization. No, because there is a plant species that is endemic to Armenia and we should struggle to keep this kind of species but in order to be successful in this struggle you should do research first of all. Uh, there are two projects that I lead. Uh, one of them is uh, with, uh, connected with lichens and the other one with fungi. And the next important project is about the anti-coding. Um, These barcoding uh, projects are very important in terms of biodiversity at the end to ensure the succession. So this DNA project is also very important and it is open, open access database. Uh, we have another project that is connected with uh, climatic change uh, and it is the observations are done within the frames of echo gradient reaching uh, from central to northern areas of Armenia. I spoke about this important herbarium, and this herbarium is updated all the time, species are added to it, and in this regard, digitalization is very important. So we are ensuring digitalization of the endemic plant species, which enables all the scientists from all over the world to have access to it. We have a Jack uh, Pan European database where, where uh, scientists from all over the world can see data from Armenian landscape and we see other countries' data. Uh, we also have reintroduction of plant species in botanical gardens. So we have a number of projects. I do not want to go too deep into detail. One of the latest um, developments is uh, the opening of molecular biology laboratories. And we are working to update the infrastructures and to develop them further. We're trying to keep and to restore and also to add the wealth that we have had. Uh, the Institute uh, was always participating in foresting, forestation projects, has had uh, its participation in a number of projects, but you know that uh, science was not well uh, financed, it was underfunded in Armenia, there were not sufficient research projects and we start from zero in many respects. I will speak about a number of important environmental projects that are either in progress or are going to start soon. Uh, we speak a lot about the fact that our academic institutions, research institutions are always are often advisory, fulfilling advisory role, helping the uh, 
different constituents. So we are trying to participate also in different grant projects. We have formed a consortium within the frames of one project, uh, which aims to prepare the seven national park management plan. And Botan Institute of Botany, Salaton, and uh, two organizations from abroad, the HP from the Czech Republic. And uh, I would like to add that uh, this can be a result of twinning to a certain extent because Yindri has connected us with this organization. And we have also a partner from Slovenia. And uh, the project is funded by UNDP and GIZ EU for Saiwan program. And the aim is to uh, prepare the management plan. All of us know that it is very complicated to ensure this plan in Saiwan National Park. There are problems with different stakeholders, and this is a varied process, a multi-level process. We cooperate with different stakeholders. Uh, from the regions and also the Ministry of Environment. There are a number of issues that require the participation uh, at the ministerial level. And we are trying to ensure that as a result of this project, we achieve a state that is more favorable than it used to be. So we are trying to disclose the problems and to address them, at least support so their solution. The next project, which is just being launched, we already have started some preparatory activities. There is one type of year, it is uh, the UNIDO project, the World Bank project, sorry. And uh, it is EU for Environment project. Uh, Carteco uh, organization, uh, Greek organization is involved as a partner, and one of the aims is to uh, preserve uh, biodiversity and ensure the protection of emerald network areas. So certain initiatives are planned to prepare some recommendations, national action plan to try to prepare methodological guidelines for the management plans of emerald network sites. Uh, also to enhance capacity building and the, ensure some management level pilot plans. And uh, some of our colleagues have already received the invitations, but I would like to avail myself of this opportunity and invite everybody to the uh, Botany Institute on Friday, 11 a.m. Uh, it is an event with the participation of stakeholders. We have a number of issues connected with Emerald sites, and we're trying to understand and to give solutions through an inclusive approach. So I hope that you will find time to join us at the event, which is going to be held on Friday at 11 a.m. in the Botany Institute, Institute of Botany. And another project that is going to start soon, we will present it in more detail in another event. We spoke a lot already about this, about monitoring of biodiversity and our activities relate to monitoring of plant species. Uh, this is uh, implemented with uh, Caucasus Nature Foundation and Ministry of Environment and it is also connected with um, PA administrations. It is a five year long program. It is going to be launched very soon we will start the preparation activities and implementation of monitoring uh, in the months of April and May. And I see that we receive a lot of recommendations which we would like to call to life. Uh, if I am not mistaken, last year in the frames of twinning projects in the Czech Republic, there was an event held which stressed the importance of 
monitoring of biodiversity, uh, we have a lot to learn from the Czech Republic when it comes to monitoring of biodiversity. So this exchange of information is very important. We shall try to extend our cooperation and involve our partners so as to be able to implement better activities and create a better system because this is not just a program but a, a program that establishes a system. That is why it is important not just to go to these protected areas, Dilijan, or Pilij, Aravik, Hosrov State Reserve, Hosrov Forest State Reserve. This is important. It is important to understand that we do not do this just for a tick. We try to enhance capacities. So we are going to involve the inspectors here. We are going to have a discussion with the Ministry of Environment about indicator species, about habitats, uh, which are important uh, in terms of biodiversity, but we lay importance on preservation and capacity building as well, because one of the functions of the inspectors is implementation of monitoring, but their skills are not that strong when it comes to monitoring. That is why it is important to ensure connections with foreign partners so as to integrate them in the processes and WWF uh, helps in this respect because our inspectors go and uh, exchange information about for instance uh, the cameras and the same can be done here both the indicator species invasive species red book species are going to be targeted here when it comes to the methodology we will present the methods in more detail when the event is held during this event but I can say that we will do our best to ensure inclusive participatory approach so that not only specialists get involved but also uh, other stakeholders uh, interested in the development of forest PAs and so on. So this is the first event of this scale of its type uh, that is why I I think it is very important to succeed and in order to succeed we need your cooperation, your support. Uh, this much, if there are any questions, welcome, I will be happy to answer. Thank you. No questions? It's a very thorough uh, explanation of what the Institute of Botany is doing. Quite an imp impressive uh, stuff, impressive project. And now I would like to ask uh, Lucine Agajanian from NABU to present us her presentation. Hi, dear all. My name is Lucine. I represent the Armenian branch of the German Nature Conservation Union. I'm a project coordinator there, but me, myself, I'm more of a field person <laughs> trying to co combine the field work with the coordination work. Uh, NABU is a German organization, as I mentioned, and it was established in uh, 1899 in Germany, and uh, the branch of NABU was opened in Armenia in 2010. Uh, today I will present the conservation work which NABU is doing, uh, implementing in Armenia. Uh, we have several. One of them is Birds of Prey Research and Conservation Project in Armenia. Second one is White Stork Ecology Research in the Ararat Valley. Uh, another community-based wetland conservation in Narak's lowlands, mammal biodiversity studies uh, via camera trapping in the northern regions of Armenia, human-wildlife conflict uh, research and analysis in the northern regions of Armenia, and of course development of eco-educational trail and bird observation point in Horvirab wetlands uh, with, together with CNF, this one. 
Um, starting with the Birds of Prey Research and Conservation Project in Armenia, it started from 2018 and started with eco-education, basically. But uh, later on, we continued with uh, also research part and conservation part. Um, about eco-education, during these years we implemented few eco-educational eco campaigns, which uh, one of them, first of them actually was the Falcon, during which we're telling uh, mainly in uh, the schools of Armenia about uh, uh, falcon diversity, and after we continued with eagles of Armenia, we did vultures of Armenia, we started to implement Bird of the Year campaign, which was being implemented by the um, uh, um, uh, Institute of the uh, Zoology uh, lab Vertebrate Laboratory uh, during many years. And we also do eco uh, educational uh, events via on online cameras. Um, uh, our field studies uh, include uh, nesting areas identification and mapping. Uh, we try to identify where in which pl places the key species are nesting and we are trying to understand what are the problems that the species are nesting for the habitat loss, for example, or some others. And we are trying to work also with communities to, uh, you know, uh, soften these problems. We also do GPS tagging and migration studies. We, during this year, years with uh, GPS tagged three Egyptian vultures and you can see on the map uh, down there three of them basically had the same migrational route and we also tagged one birded vulture which was the first one in Armenia and we are planning to do more. We, our One of our uh, key species is also golden eagle and uh, we also want to uh, continue to work with other species as well. Um, we also do ringing and migration studies and collaboration with international uh, partners. We exchange data with them and we try to uh, bring the international uh, experts and international ideas here to develop this uh, direction. We also do conservation actions, which is more, uh, in, which more includes work with local communities, which we think that the Communication is the key, and uh, you need to communicate with local people in order to, you know, uh, make them to care about uh, their surrounding nature, especially in our case, birds, and not to disturb them. Uh, we work also with hunters uh, and trying to convince them to become bird lovers. And we actually managed to have uh, two care caretakers from hunters who are regularly giving us data about uh, where the birds, when are they coming, are they nesting successfully or not. And we want to uh, increase this network and develop it uh, better. And we also collaborate with the local and international partners to understand which methods can be used in Armenia for better conservation. Uh, another project is the White Stork Ecology uh, Research in Ararat Valley. This project started in uh, 2020 uh, uh, for us when um, the pollution of white storks occurred in Ararat Valley. Uh, actually, the pollution occurred uh, long before, but we started to work on this project from 2020. And what we do is, uh, of course, again, eco-education, research, and conservation. Uh, for eco-education, we, uh, last year, together the, with the Ministry of Environment, uh, announced white stork uh, bird of the year, and uh, we... Uh, did informative lectures in uh, schools of Armenia in all the regions where white storks are nesting. Uh, and also we did eco-educational uh, birdwatching excursions for schools and we did open birdwatching excursions for those who are interested, just like all the people who applied. And also we put it to online cameras, not only for studying their nesting biology and then understanding their pollution sources, but also it was a great eco-educational tool because uh, many people started to follow uh, the nests live uh, which are available on YouTube you can find in our channel and uh, they were writing comments and even trying to give them names which is adorable and um, we also uh, used the online cameras uh, to understand like if uh, uh, the, where the pollution how the pollution process is going because one online camera was on the nest which was uh, actually uh, clean and another 
another one was on the nest which was uh, polluted. Uh, with the field studies, we do annual surveys from 2020. This year will be the fourth year we are doing a survey in Ararat Valley. Uh, we actually count all the nests in Ararat Valley and uh, we take a GPS uh, location. We uh, describe the condition of the nest. We describe the condition of the chicks, the number, and uh, pollution, non-pollution, and all those data together. We have to analyze. We do the mapping and understand if the like gradient process of uh, the pollution, if it's growing or slowing down. We also did contamination studies uh, from the feathers. We sent the feathers to three different laboratories in Europe, Russia, and Armenia. Uh, our uh, like main hypothesis still is that uh, the contamination comes from the water pollution, from the sewage, uh, untreated uh, sewage water, uh, but still many studies need to be done. Uh, we do nesting and reproduction, I, I already told about it, uh, reproduction biology studies by online cameras. And you can see the map of the pollution, which is from 2022. I didn't present here from 2020 and 21, but uh, if I showed, you would see that uh, if the area is uh, actually growing, and it was grown from 2021 to 2022 by 21%. Um, Conservation actions, uh, of course, we did rescue of uh, contaminated white storks because there were many cases that white storks couldn't fly, like juveniles, because they had polluted feathers and they were appearing in the streets and, you know, um, they were, the car were hitting them or, you know, dogs were attacking. So there was a need to uh, do something about it. Not only us, also other organizations did the rescue work. We had a contract with Yerevan Zoo, we're financing them to take care of the storks that we were rescuing. But it actually uh, stayed uh, like that uh, situation only one year because the Yerevan Zoo didn't have like uh, suitable conditions to keep the storks over there. So from here, we started to think about that maybe Armenia needs a rehabilitation state, uh, like center for the birds, wild birds, especially for storks at the moment, but generally it will be for the all uh, wild birds. And uh, this year we are going to start the process together the, with the Ministry of Environment uh, uh, to uh, establish one rehabilitation center in Armenia. Uh, and of course we work with the communities in um, and the uh, Armenian electric company regarding problems with nests because the population of white storks is huge in Ararat Valley and it's growing uh, every year as our data shows. And there are many problems, especially on electrical poles, there are many fires uh, and also on the roofs of the villagers, uh, like when they nest on the roofs, the roofs are getting rusted and they are having problems. So uh, we are trying to do recommendations for them to solve this problem without harming birds. Uh, we also do study mammal bio, biodiversity by camera trapping in the Ilijan National Park and in Ijevan Sanctuary. Uh, but now we want to concentrate mainly on the Ilijan National Park and starting from this year, actually, I was talking to my colleague, colleague uh, Robert Talihanyan, and uh, from 27th of uh, March, we are going to put camera traps in Old Diligent National Park. In the lower map, you can see the sections divided. And we are going to put in 20 sections uh, uh, in a cell uh, divided method uh, later to be able to analyze the data and give such uh, scientific uh, details as like uh, the density and the abundance of the animals. And also, of course, the diversity. Uh, human wildlife conflict studies we did in northern Armenia more than three years. Uh, it was based on surveys. We entered every village in northern regions of Armenia, which is Lori. Uh, Tavush and Shirak, uh, and uh, we did survey, asked questions about the uh, intensity of conflicts, what uh, were the conflict species, etc. And now the whole data is analyzed, to whoever wants can uh, get it from us. Uh, and uh, we also did recommendations for the uh, communities, and we did mitigation measures for them, uh, provided electrical fences and also shepherd dogs because this was, these were uh, the best solutions uh, for the um, uh, villagers, as they mentioned during the survey. Um, 
We also did a two-year project, community-based wetland conservation in RX lowlands. Um, during this project, we did biodiversity analysis in the project area, which was actually next to the Metamor IBA, uh, the communities around Metamor IBA. Uh, based on the biodiversity analysis, we also uh, created a management plan, which also included social demographic details and also our recommendations, how they can improve the area ecologically generally those this management plan is almost ready and we are going to give this to the communities because but there is a huge problem because all the lands belong to the communities so they need to want to do something about it uh, but we will continue to work with them to uh, try to make the area look uh, healthier from the environmental perspective. Uh, we created volunteer groups, uh, two, uh, and one of them is actually very successful. We give them equipment, uh, and they are now monitoring the area, and uh, they are also like uh, working with the community. They are fighting the fires. Uh, you know, the people are uh, making, uh, like firing the reeds, and this uh, volunteer group is uh, traveling around and trying to do something about this situation. Uh, and we also Im did implementation of small-scale conservation project in the uh, by the communities. Uh, the communities were able to apply to others our small grants, and they implemented their own uh, projects. Most of them were connected to the uh, plastic pollution uh, because the area is highly polluted with plastic, and not only plastic, but also the rivers are very polluted. But the communities did the work mainly with the plastic. We also wanted to implement a project regarding the water pollution to uh, make the system work uh, healthier and clean uh, the area but because the whole problem comes through you know rivers are <laughs> connecting areas and the problem comes uh, from uh, far so the whole river ecosystem should be uh, uh, monitored and also uh, some projects should be done about rivers. Uh, this is what we think, because uh, if the rivers are not healthy, the communities and the lands can be can't be health healthy. And uh, the last one, the development of an eco-educational eco trail and bird observation point in Hor Horvidab State Sanctuary. With this one we do with uh, together with CNF. We are going to put an observation point uh, in that area. And we already have a trail, eco-trail, which we are going to renew. Uh, so it will be kind of an eco-educational uh, uh, activity uh, for not only locals but also visitors which can uh, bring income to Hosra Forest State Reserve. And in our organization we think that uh, conservation should be science by based, that's why we put a lot of uh, uh, attention on uh, scientific research uh, which can uh, later be uh, you know uh, implemented in conservation. Thank you very much. If any questions, I will be happy to answer. Thank you, Lucina. Any questions? I have the question, uh, the, the amount of work you do is uh, very diverse and quite impressive. Uh, uh, how many, do you have like members, membership, or is it uh, based on uh, uh, employees? And how many employees do you have? Uh, so uh, we have uh, permanent employees, eight, and we have non-permanent employees, maybe 10. And uh, we have volunteer group, uh, which are, m those people are mainly involved in the, for example, we have a campaign which is uh, about like cleaning the rivers from plastic. So those volunteers are involved in this kind of projects. Uh, but uh, we also did the White Stork survey, like small part, uh, like uh, only once with Yerevan State University students. But uh, our members are not uh, mostly involved in uh, scientific work, like for example, nest counts or something. So it's basically, basically employee-based. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, too. Uh, I wanted to ask, uh, what was your experience with the approach of the communities and the people when you worked on the human-wildlife conflict uh, projects? Whether they welcomed it or uh, how did they react? 
uh, well, they they really liked that somebody cares and asks them questions about uh, whether do they have conflicts with wildlife. And uh, when we were asking, like, uh, what, what is the percentage, you know, of the conflict? They always, in the northern regions at least, especially in Tavush, they said that 10% of their livestock belongs to the nature. So they were okay if 10% is gone by wolves. But... Um, they, if 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 the wolf, uh, you know, kills the, you know, the man has, uh, for example, hundred sheep, and the wolf kills all hundred sheep. Of course, he gets angry, and uh, there was a small percentage, I would say, maybe fifteen percent only, that people were very aggressive towards wolves, especially because this was the uh, first uh, conflict species in northern regions of Armenia. But in most of other cases, they were you know, more of a, you know, it's nature, and we live in nature, we are fine with it. But of course, they expect from the government a system of uh, refund. No. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any other question? Okay, if not, thank you. Uh, thank you, Lucine. And I would like to ask uh, Karen Malvalian uh, to tell us something about the Eco corridors in uh, Armenia. Thank you very much. Uh, first of all, I would like to thanks uh, to thank entire winning project team, uh, the Ministry of Environment, staff of the Ministry who was involved. Um, I am also proud of the results of the project. I should say I was one of the co-authors of the Twinning Fish, together with our international expert um, Alida Ban Pavlovich from Croatia, and now we see result. This is very nice. Yeah, When you write something, then it comes to to the life, this is absolutely different feeling what you have at the end. Thank you very much. I wouldn't uh, tell about what WWF is doing in the country because most of people here know about our activities, especially we work very closely with the Ministry of Environment. Uh, since 2002, one of our first projects it was conservation of the leopard. In Armenia, uh, until now, it continues. Actually, it was umbrella species and uh, flagship species to raise funds and to bring to the country to improve protected areas, uh, to strengthen them. Because when we started in 2002, you can imagine that there was nothing in the uh, key protected areas like in Hostrov Reserve, no vehicle, no uh, uh, equipment for staff to proper monitor and patrol the area. Now it's much better. Now CNF uh, does a great job in supporting uh, protected territories of the country. So in absolutely different situation what we have during these 20 years. It's absolutely uh, now less poaching, more protected areas. I would say also we all protected areas in the country, new ones, uh, uh, together with the Ministry of Environment were created through our project funded by different uh, donors, uh, starting from RP Lake, uh, uh, Arabic National Parks, uh, Zangezur Sanctuary and others. But now we are much focused on uh, development of Econet, uh, which uh, will uh, finally, all protected areas will uh, be connected together. That's why our, my today's presentation will be mostly about our ongoing project on eco corridors, which is funded by German government through KFW. Uh, since 2015, we implemented first phase. Now we are in the stage of second phase. And uh, here, for example, you can see the map. On the left top uh, part of the map, you can see this uh, 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 consolidated uh, Habitat suitability analysis for four species. It's uh, leopard, Armenian mouflon, bezoar goat, and brown bear. From the second phase, we also included uh, red deer as we uh, 
uh, together with the ministry, we intend to release and uh, to rehabilitate this animal in the northern Armenia, but there is a plan of, as well to release uh, these animals in the south and protected areas like in Chicago and other places of the south. Here in this map you can see uh, also some uh, boundaries of the communities. This is communal boundaries. Most of them now consolidated now uh, and they are much bigger boundaries anyway. It's uh, very important when planning uh, uh, planning corridor and planning uh, part of the corridor. This is we call community conserved areas or private community uh, private uh, uh, conserved areas. This is very important when planning. At the moment, within ECA one eco corridor fund one, I, I should say, we have signed seven agreement with the communities and six community conserved areas where. Uh, established by community councils. Altogether, they cover about 37,000 hectares, which make up, uh, makes up more than uh, one and two, three percent of entire Armenian territory. We provided to this uh, conservation agreement about one half million. And number of caretakers or community rangers is uh, 12 people who represented these uh, focus communities. Within the second phase, uh, phase, we plan to have six conservation agreements and six, six conserved areas will be formed. Hopefully, it will uh, we come up with a total coverage of 50,000 hectares and total budget is two, uh, 2 million. And num number of caretakers within second phase uh, will be around 16 people, maybe a bit more or a bit less. Uh, within the project uh, through uh, company, what we had agreement, uh, Armenian companies, they developed uh, uh, application for smart uh, for smartphones. Uh, it's called uh, Airspeed. It's like a, a smart uh, applic application what some countries use, but it's more simple in uh, use. What we need only from caretakers just to take a picture. Then uh, all information comes to the administrator, including uh, coordinate, including date, uh, elevation, and and uh, of course they should also select category what they saw. For example, if a uh, wildlife, then w what kind of species, how many adults, uh, small ones. Then if wildlife human conflict, then what was beehives or charts, etc. Or uh, we were speaking about pasture management, and uh, Yindrich mentioned about uh, uh, overgrazing or <laughs> undergrazing. Yeah, of course, we have not so well established regulated system of grazing. We also, it's a part of our conservation agreement, pasture management plan, and this uh, application allows caretakers to observe and to monitor these pasture uh, grazing schemes. And uh, all this information come to uh, to us, and we can analyze, and then to work with the communities. Uh, for example, here all these observations, uh, what was done by caretakers, came to our GIS, and we analyze. Uh, and you can see uh, here, yeah, uh, some points. And here, uh, it's about. They are good until 2018 and from 2019 to 2021. It allows us to understand how uh, the abundance of this uh, species is increasing or decreasing. It's not say it's not for uh, number uh, counting of the animals, but this is at least gives us a distribution of the species. Yeah. The same observation we got for brown bear, for leopard, and uh, for Armenian mouflon. Unfortunately, the situation with mouflon is not so good in comparison with other species because its main habitat uh, uh, is located at the border with Nakhichivan, uh, uh, part of Azerbaijan and a lot of military in both sides. This is, of course, affect the population of Armenian mouflon. This is a kind of uh, table with uh, all observations and uh, counting uh, and some 
Uh, some uh, animals are counted by our specialists, like bezoargot and, uh, and mouflons, uh, when uh, leopard and bears are uh, mostly uh, thanks to camera trapping methodology. Another uh, recently, SDC uh, also joined to our program, to ECF program, and mostly it's related to value chain in the same communities to help them in development of uh, tourism, ecotourism, wildlife harvesting, dairy, pasture management, as well as we shall work on uh, development of legislation, or not legislation, but by, bylaws, as well as we shall be dealing with uh, resilient uh, uh, communities to climate change and ecosystem to climate change. In particular, we shall help, help uh, target communities in uh, energy sufficient buildings, uh, alternative energy sources, as well as we'll um, work closely with Armenian Forest Enterprise to improve the management, especially connected with wildfires. Um, this is, for example, MAP, and uh, especially I make this presentation for our colleagues from Finland and Czech Republic to see that there is ongoing uh, process of establishing conserved areas, which is, uh, from my point of view, a very good tool to reach 30, 30 global initiative. And here there are some uh, conserved areas established within our, our project, as well as some other organizations like FPWC, PESWAR Foundation, and altogether, I guess it will be uh, around uh, 8%. And then uh, within ACF2, if uh, some other, as I told, uh, CCAs are created, then we shall reach around coverage of 10% of entire territory. And if we plot this to 13 13% uh, uh, of coverage of protected areas, then Armenia will be more or less in good shape. Of course, we expect uh, to get some more uh, protected areas, and there is a plan in the government to create at least Jermuk National Park and Tatev National Park. This is again in the south, Jermuk is here. There are already existing uh, sanctuaries, as well as Tatev National Park. Actually, we submitted to the Ministry an entire portfolio of official inauguration of the uh, park and hopefully um, it will be created, yeah? Um, and, and you see all these protected areas in the south, Arabic National Park, Zangezur Sanctuary, Hustub Sanctuary, Yindrich ha has been or already many times in this, and there are also protected areas for your information in Iranian side, it's Aras Baran, Kiamaki, and this mar recently created as a transboundary park with Armenian uh, Arabic National Park, uh, as well as uh, Zangezur National Park in Nakhichevan along the border. Yeah, it goes like this here. And the main population of the leopard is in this core Zangezur range in both sides, yeah? as well as in Iran, of course. This is shape of the corridor, linking protected areas in the south with Khosro Reserve, then going to the up until Sevan National Park, uh, Dilishan National Park, and in this color, these are area what we are focused in the second phase of Eco Corridor. This is a map of uh, emerald sites and, and key biodiversity areas. Uh, key biodiversity areas, uh, many of experts, Armenian experts who were involved in our planning process, they know quite well. Uh, includes IBAs, IPAs, uh, but because of some emerald sites are too big, like in Sevan, and I guess it will be revised, as well as many other uh, emerald sites, uh, we do, didn't identify entire this area as a key bi biodiversity area, but most of them, they uh, coincide either with protected areas or with conserved areas. Uh, I guess, uh, for example, here we have 22 KBAs, uh, which cover more than 1 million hectare, and coverage of protected area 386,000, and actually all together uh, uh, protected area cover 38%. If we consider uh, conserved areas, it will be more than 50%. 
Our recommendations, based on uh, twinning as well, uh, coincide with what you came uh, with some conclusions. Uh, may, uh, the ministry may uh, agree or not, but this is our opinion. Yeah, what should be done. Of course, it's clear that enforcement of existing protected area system should be continued, and I am very happy now that. The ministry involved scientific institutions. Arsen has a very good presentation, and hopefully, scientific center for uh, zoology and hydroecology also will be involved, and with CNF funding, this is very important uh, to bring uh, scientific society in monitoring of uh, biodiversity, at least in protected areas. Uh, we think also about establishment of new protected areas, as it, it's part of our uh, strategy, not our, but uh, the governmental strategy on development of protected area systems. This is Jermuk and Tatev National Park, and maybe some other small sized protected areas like these lakes in, in Lori. And more from our experience, it's more and more difficult to establish a, a protected area because. Uh, uh, no space actually remains, and by these two or some small, maybe we shall reach coverage of protected area at, um, at the level of 16%, and if uh, conserved areas also increase, then we shall have at least 25-26% of coverage, which is more or less close to 30, 30 global initiative target. Uh, we just uh, recently met our uh, minister and deputy minister, minister Mr. Maimarian, about legaliz legalization of the conserved areas. And now this um, uh, law, which was produced within uh, twinning projects, thanks to uh, the team in, in, um, of the project and the ministry, this uh, meaning that a valuable ecosystem will provide uh, uh, a basis for those organizations who are dealing with these conserved areas, and it will be legal basis. And within our project on eco corridor and on uh, living landscape, uh, funded by SDC, we are ready to uh, help in development of bylaws uh, which will support this legislation. For example, how these conserved areas uh, can be. Uh, identified, delineated, demarcated, managed, this is very important, and so on. We also uh, think that establishment of central biodiversity governance body is very essential for the country, um, who will be uh, coordinating an, uh, uh, entire work. At the moment there is a gap from my point of view. Um, it should be, from uh, my point of view, a legal body, legal, uh, registered under the Minister of Environment, who will be dealing with all these issues on the, uh, starting from um, improvement of management of protected areas, uh, monitoring of uh, management of protected areas, etc., etc., many other things. Uh, also, we think that introduction, as it was discussed during the today meeting, a centralized biodiversity monitoring system. Uh, with the uh, help of scientific institutions and some NGOs, for example, who can share their own uh, data. Uh, very important from my point of view, establishment of a training center with appropriate curricula for the protected areas, conserved areas staff, and maybe for other who are interested. Uh, and improvement of financial capacity of protected areas as well as conserved areas. They always need more and more financial support uh, outside or by their, the, their own generation of income. This is also quite important. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. Uh, any comments uh, or questions regarding the eco-corridors or uh, the final recommendations that Karen just presented. Everyone seems tired now. <laughs> Another coffee break. Another coffee break, Thank yeah. You. It's coming. Thank you, Karen, very much. Uh, or there is a question. I so, I'm sorry. Uh, because, Karen, you are the next one, so I thought you are coming to the microphone to present your presentation. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yes. 
mission. I, I just uh, wanted to uh, welcome this great and very important initiative and uh, to thank WWF for this uh, hard and uh, comprehensive work. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, Karen Agababian is our next speaker, so I uh, would like to ask you to come, come up here. That's the future. Yeah? VL. Birds and butterflies. Thank you very much. Um, it's a great honor to present our activities here. Uh, I'm uh, representing Birdlings Armenia non governmental organization, which was initially. Um, created as TSE towards sustainable ecosystems. And it unites um, people who are uh, specialized uh, mostly on birds and uh, butterflies because um, these groups are mm, very important for uh, monitoring of environmental changes and uh, for ecotourism development. And uh, I will uh, tell you how we do implement the monitoring, um, what kind of results we obtain and how we use these results. And uh, we'll tell about how the birds and butterflies are connected to general biological diversity and ecosystems resilience. So uh, the basic process of uh, monitoring is uh, quite obvious, right? We need to collect the data, we need to somehow proceed the, uh, the data, and we need to interpret the results. And um, the data collect collection is uh, conducted mostly by volunteers and by scientists. The data processing includes statistical data processing and spatial, so uh, map analysis. And uh, results interpretation is done at the level of species, uh, level of ecosystems and level of uh, policy. I would mm, stop a bit at data collection uh, part because this is the most costly and labor intensive part in the monitoring. And we have to think somehow to reduce the cost. Otherwise, we would have the monitoring, which is a tool a very expensive tool, but we all need uh, the tools to be uh, uh, cost effective. And um, that's why we are trying to uh, repeat the examples of developing developed countries and to use the volunteer force. Um, here we had um, a great step forward when we started working on uh, European Breeding Bird Atlas 2 because we are national coordinators uh, of, of this uh, issue. Uh, and um, through uh, working on this, on this project, we have crea created a bigger pipe of data collectors, uh, people who have been coming from abroad to uh, collect the data for this great project as well as uh, oh, pardon me, as well as a uh, pipe of uh, specific tourists, bird watchers, who uh, were coming to Armenia to see the uh, species that they would like to see. And we have uh, guides, field guides, uh, tour leaders, who are well trained in not only uh, to leading the tours, but also uh, to collect the data during those tours. So we used all these opportunities to uh, develop the uh, database. Um, when we go through uh, to the interpretation, um, I skip the, the part of data processing because if you have those specialists, you just pay and you get the necessary re results. So you pay statistical specialists,